Okay, so today I'm going to keep on reading Prisoner B3087. Last time I read Chapter 2. And now I'm going to be reading Chapter 3 on page 14. Okay, here we go. I was 12 years old. Chapter 3. I was 12 years old when the wall began. Pontregorzi, our neighborhood, was being walled up from Zigadi Square to the Pontegorzi Market and down along the Zadi Place. The Nazis were wailing us in, walling us in. I went out to see it. It was nearly three meters tall and made of brick. At the top, it had been had rounded caps like the tops of tombstones. The wall stretched from one building corner to another, right across the street, cutting us off from the rest of Krakow. In the buildings that were part of the wall, they bricked up the windows and wall and doors so no one could escape. There were only three ways in a gate at Zigadi Square, another at the market, and another in Luskoka Street. I ran from the gate from gate to gate to gate, talking it all in. Podgorzy was now the Jewish ghetto. All the Poles there who weren't Jews had to move out, and all the Jews who lived outside the ghetto in Krakow had to move in. I watched them moving in, wave after wave of them. Huge groups of Jews climbing out of trucks and going down Lakoska Street. There were men and women and children, families, teenagers, and grandparents. They all wore starved Starved David armbands like us. Some of them wrote the uniforms of the jobs they had too. Policemen, postmen, nurses, trolley conductors. They were There were no jobs for Jews anymore. No jobs besides cleaning the toilets of German sh soldiers. My father and uncle had lost their shops, had their inventories seized by the Nazis, just as Uncle Mosh said they would. The new Jews carried their luggage with them. Everything they owned in the world, and they looked around with big worried eyes at the buildings and streets at their new home. They were probably hoping that things would be better here than whenever it was when than whenever it was they came from than wherever it was where they came from but everything that had happened over the last year had taught us that things always got worse. There were a few empty flats left by the departing poles, but not nearly enough for all the new people. My parents came out into the street and invited a family to come and live with us. The, the Laskis, a family of three with a seven-year-old boy named Aaron, or Aaron, we gave them to my, we gave them my bedroom, and I slept in the sitting room. Other families did the same. Then, as the days went by, and more and more. Jews poured into the ghetto, not just from Krakow now, but from villages and towns outside the city. We took in a second family, the Rosenblums, and a third, the Brotmans. The Germans even made it a rule. Every flat must hold at least four families. I no, no longer had my own bedroom, nor did my parents. The children had one room, and the adults were divided between my parents' bedroom and the sitting room. Only the kitchen was shared by all. There were 14 of us in a flat that had been cozy for three. All I ever wanted to do was get out of the house and go play with my friends. It was it was far too crowded at home. My parents wouldn't let me go outside for fear I'd be taken up in a work gang. Any time the Germans had work to be done, like scrubbing toilets or helping build the wall, they grabbed Jews off the street to do it. Father was taken all the time, sometimes mother. The Nazis even took people out of the ghetto to work elsewhere in Krakow. Sometimes they never returned. This will all be over by summer, my father told me. We'll just have to make do until then. He was my father. I wanted to believe him, but I wasn't so sure anymore. It was January 1941. The Germans ruled Krak Krakow. I was 12 years old, and for the first time in my life, I had begun to doubt my father. Okay, so if you want to hear more from Prisoner B3087... If you want to hear chapter 4, look for my next video.